So when you say you're marrying a man, you are subjecting yourself to his authority. Now, when you decide not to subject yourself to that authority, you are a rebel. So when you marry him, you're coming under his authority. You are not authority sharers, even though you are both heirs to the kingdom of God. Because there, there is neither male nor female. But we are functioning here. That's why you are given the body of a woman. And he given the body of a male. So in that union, in that relationship, there is a head. So when you say you're marrying a man, you are subjecting yourself to his authority. Now, when you decide not to subject yourself to that authority, you are a rebel. Can you see that? And God's not going to accept what you're doing. He can accept it. Because you're not functioning correctly. Why did God make the woman? Simple. When you start in Genesis, he says this. You study all the way from chapter 2 into chapter 3, you see the whole thing. Now he says, he brought all the animals before Adam to see what he would call them. And Adam named them. And when he was done, the Bible tells us there was not found a suitable one for Adam. No suitable company or companion for Adam. Then God said, it is, now at this point, I want us to read it. Some of you women, when I'm through with this, you won't be in a hurry to marry. Are you in Genesis? <laughs> All right, chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. From verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone say the word alone alone, alone. alone. he didn't say it is not good that the man should be lonely there's a big difference between being alone and being lonely he was not lonely he was alone and when you say alone it means alone about something let's go on And Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him, I will make him a partner. Come on, talk to me. A partner? I will make him a supervisor. the way some people are I mean you see the man the man's going and the woman is right behind you know like he's a supervisor he didn't say I'll make him a supervisor <laughs> look at your Bible again I will make him a help I'll make him a hell. The Hebrew word is Asa. It means help. A help meet for him. A help, a help, a help, a help, a help qualified for him. A help 
I will make him a help because he was alone. I will make him somebody to help him. I will make him somebody to help him. Why? Because God gave him a responsibility. He needed a help. Not somebody to tell him what to do, but a help. What's the matter with you? If that is easily understood in every home, I don't think you have problems. I tell people, you don't need a marriage seminar. You need a word seminar. <laughs> if you just listen to the word of God, you don't have all this fighting. It pays to do what God says. Your strength is in being in God's place where he puts you. That's your strength. Let me tell you, no husband wants another mother. Get it now. Your husband doesn't want another mother. He's had one all his life. He doesn't want an older sister. He probably had one. Your secret is in obedience. Your secret is in listening to your husband. Your secret is in doing those things that please him when you don't do those things that please your husband you take the role of a mother or you take the role of an older sister what happens automatically is he starts seeing you differently the reaction he has for those that try to tell him what to do will be the reactions he'll have towards you then you start saying i don't understand you now become anyhow you know the meaning of anyhow first you would dress as you choose because he doesn't tell you what to do you will act as you choose because he doesn't tell you what to do you will do what you like because you are your own boss and you know what a man loves the one he serves and the one that serves him he fights the one that is at the level with him You see it? So when you find your husband trying to tell you who is the owner, who is the, who is the, who is the owner of this car, who is the owner of this, you say, ah, are we, are, are we, not, are we not together? You are supposed to be together. But there's a problem. When someone starts telling you I'm older than you, there's a reason. There's a reason. Because it's supposed to be obvious. It means you're in rebellion. And he's trying to reemphasize some things for you. Don't create, don't make your life hard. Listen to me. To be happy in your home and in your marriage is the easiest thing in the world. Just take your role. Take your place. That place that God gave you is a beautiful place. It's a place of peace. It's a place of love. It's a place of excellence. When you come out of it, you find it's not a husband you you have you call him a husband but he's not a husband it's like what jesus said they call me lord lord but they don't do what i tell them to do actually every wise person listens to wise voices but he will listen to a wise voice that is presented wisely everyone rebels against the voice that tries to make a fool out of him so even when you tell, I remember S.G. Elton, an old man of God years ago, a Briton who came to live in Nigeria for many years before he died. He made a statement. We were in a meeting with him. And he said, the best way to destroy what you're trying to say is to try to teach your teachers. So you destroy what you're trying to say. For some of you, the only reason you are you hold on to you think that when your husband say, has a particular idea you must ho have the opposite if he says it's this way that is when you will now say is that the only reason is because he said is that way of course some husbands are like that too the only reason they refuse that idea is because the, the wife said it but i tell you it must be the way you said it present it as a suggestion a wise suggestion why can't you just humble yourself and be wise be smart a wise woman will always 
be an influence to her husband. A foolish one will always annoy the husband, make him mad, make him angry. And when you make him angry, you'll be the victim. Are you still here? Learn to listen to your husband. Learn to listen. Learn it. Practice it. Tell yourself you're going to do it. That is where your beauty is. Once you stop listening, all your beauty evaporates. It, it's something you probably don't know. Beauty is in obedience. That's where the glory is. Once you are not obedient, once you are, you are harsh, you talk anyhow to your husband, your beauty evaporates. You wonder why you are dressing and you can't see it. He doesn't remember your last hairstyle. He can't see all those things. Well, today's meeting is not for this, but I... Are you still in this room? I just thought I should, I should explain some of those things to you. You can have a better life. Honestly, you can. You can. How can a marriage become a war, a war zone? A, a man is angry and going this way. The wife also... <laughs> she too small. Two people who should have been praying together. Okay, let's pray. This one kneels down like this. The other one faces the other direction. <laughs> Why? The Bible says if you act that way, your prayers will be hindered. I know. That's why some of you, you don't pray together. You say, I don't want to have God hinder my prayer. I don't want anybody to hinder my prayer. <laughs> I pray my own. You pray your own. <laughs> These people are supposed to be married. One is Urababashina Mama Kurama Mama. Hallelujah. 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 You can have a better life. You can. Practice it. Practice it. Practice it. Practice it. See, remember, you probably, that little boy or that little girl that's just gone bigger. You can become wiser too. Or else, you would only add age and size. <laughs>